Hi, I'm Matt Vanacoro from MacProVideo.com and AskVideo.com, and today we're going to take a look at Session Guitarist Strummed Acoustic, the new sample library of acoustic guitar rhythmic strumming from Native Instruments. This library has a multitude of patterns and songs that can help you get up and running with your rhythm and acoustic guitar tracks quickly. To get started, you'll want to first load up the instrument. You'll see a bunch of different colored notes at the bottom. These are key switches and playing areas. The ones on the left side are key switches. They activate the different patterns. You'll notice as I choose a different key switch, the pattern in the key switch area switches. So that's how I select the pattern that I want to use. I can do it with the mouse, or I can just tap the key switch button. Once I've selected the pattern, I can play a chord. A simple triad will do. You'll notice here that you can see the analysis changing as I change the chord down here in the bottom. So it reads the chords I'm playing, and this includes chords that have color tones, such as ninths, sevenths, thirteenths, all sorts of great stuff. Diminished chords. You can get some really out there harmonies going. They've really sampled just about every type of chord you can think of. If you don't want to play the chords yourself, or if you're not much of a piano player, you can use the auto chord function located here. The auto chord function will enable you to select a diatonic key, such as C, and then you can simply play a single note to trigger the strumming in that chord. If you want to modify your chord choice with suspensions, or color tones like sevenths and ninths. And remember, it'll keep it all diatonic since that's a C, it was a C major seventh. But if I go to a G, I've got a dominant one. And it even has some of the common pop rock tones like a flatted seventh chord. So it lets you get in there and do some of the common pop rock tricks that you would want to do. And you don't have to be a great piano player to be able to do it. You can do it all on single notes. In addition to these great patterns, I've also got some endings and introductions that I can use. So I've got some notes here indicated in the yellow that are good for the end of a song. And I've got some notes here indicated in the green that are good for maybe the beginning of a song. It's also important when you start to use those that you don't feel the need to necessarily quantize them, but just put them where the song fits them naturally. If you take a look at this, you can see that when I put those key switches in there, they're happening a little bit before the beat, as are the chord trigger notes. And that's okay, because that allows this particular chord to end directly on the beat, if you listen. Since it's kind of a rolled out arpeggio, it's okay that it gets to that note a little early and then opens it up. In general, you won't need to quantize. This particular instrument is, for the most part, going to synchronize with your host's tempo and measure structure so that you won't have to worry about that. You'll trigger some things a little early just to be on the safe side and let them stay there in your sequence there. Let's talk a little bit more about the sound of this instrument. I'm able to, besides just picking different patterns, I'm actually able to, as well, select different areas on the guitar where I want to hear those chords. So if I take this pattern, let's just switch songs up a little bit for a bit of a different strum. You'll notice the voicing up here. I can switch from low to high and blend between two different performances of these chords. I can have a high voice performance or a low voice performance, two differently sampled performances, and I've got mix control between them. I can even control that with the mod wheel. So I don't even need to put my hands on the computer. I can do it all from my MIDI controller. 
Now, if you're lucky enough to have a complete control, all of these different notes down here, these key switches, will be mapped out in front of you on the light strip. You can actually see the notes lit up in front of you, the ones that indicate the key switches, the endings, the intros, and the playable area of the instrument. Now, every single song in strummed acoustic is made up of multiple patterns. You might have noticed before that when I switched songs right here, it loaded up a whole bunch of different patterns that I could use. These individual different types of strumming or samples are patterns, and you can basically make up a song of like patterns. Now, Native Instruments has provided us with a whole ton of them, but you can feel free to make up your own as well. So if you have a group of patterns that you want to make into a song, it's easy enough to do that. Simply double click right into one of these empty slots, and that will bring up our pattern browser. And in the pattern browser, I can go through and listen to all the patterns, choose one, double click it, and now that is my pattern. F sharp one will trigger that. I'll hit F sharp one, I'll play it. And it's in there. Now, if I'm not sure what pattern I want to add to this song, I can actually use a really cool feature called the Rhythm Finder. So to activate this Rhythm Finder and get a pattern, I can click here in this little Find field. And it'll open up the Pattern Browser, and I've got this Rhythm Search function here. This Rhythm Search function is basically a computer translator. It lets you go, hey, I need that junk, 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 junk. <laughs> How many times have you said that to a guitarist? And you know what? Most guitarists can speak that language. Well, strummed acoustic can too. So I'll go into my rhythmic thing here, and I'll just click one and two and uh It works kind of like a step sequencer. So I'm just clicking those eighth notes in here. Bump, bump, bump. Check out one and two and uh Now, I don't have to keep filling this whole thing out. I can simply alt-click the first one, and it'll automatically fill up the rest of it with a pattern that matches. So now if you look, I've got junk, 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 junk. Now down here, it's listed me all the patterns that are pretty close to that. And it's given me its confidence in that pattern right here. So this one obviously is the most confident. Let's see how close. Wow, that's pretty much right on. So you can see how it matches up with the pattern I made between the full strums and slider strums. So since that's the pattern I like, I'll double click it, and now it's part of my song. So that's how you can quickly make these customized songs filled with patterns that are exactly the type of thing you're looking for. Let's take a look at the sound menu and sound presets. Sound presets are basically configurations of the sound menu that let you play with this voicing balance and a couple of other things as well. So there's a lot of things I've got going on here. I've got some voicing balance that we looked at before. As you know, we can adjust that with the mod wheel. I'm going to put it all the way on the bottom end right now. And I've also got the ability to go into stereo tracks or doubling tracks. Now a double track is going to simulate you actually recording a doubled acoustic track. So if you want to get that quick, really wide, super double tracked sound, you can simply enable doubling. Watch, I'll take this pattern. And now let's enable the doubling. Back to stereo. You can definitely hear the difference between one acoustic player playing and two. And it's got that typical pop doubled sound. Now in the sound menu, you can also do a few other things. You can fine tune the amount of fret noise that you hear. And you can adjust the effects engine. Some EQ, compression, and reverb. In addition to the sound menu, I've also got some playback options. With playback options, I can adjust some other things, like the amount of swing, how much the performance is humanized. In latch mode, should the performance keep playing on in perpetuity, or should it let go and stop playing as soon as I let go of the keyboards, or should it finish a measure, should it finish a few beats? How is the pattern synced? Does the pattern play immediately from the beginning every time I start playing, or is it synced to the measures of my host sequence so that if I press in the middle, it will start the pattern in the middle? 
You can offset your timing if you're dealing with some delay or a performance that is not perfectly locked to the beat. And we've also got this tempo adjuster. So let's slow down the tempo a little bit. Well, first of all, let's pick another pattern. Let's go to the rock set. Kind of a rock guy. We've got rock A, a great pattern. Now let's say that that pattern is really close to what I want, but I'm doing more of an alt rock tune. I want it to be faster, but not necessarily exactly twice as fast. So I'll go to the playback menu. Let's slow my tempo down a little bit. And one of the cool things that I can do is use this tempo button here, double the tempo of the pattern. So it enables me to take a pattern that maybe wasn't meant to be played at, say, 160 BPM, but I put it at 80 and doubled it so I could actually make some use out of it. So again, just allowing you a little bit more customization in the way you handle your patterns. In the front menu, I've also got the ability to customize the patterns a little bit further. So I'll open up the info pane, and I'm using this Rock A pattern that I've chosen. And I like everything about it, except for the second half. I don't like that little syncopation there, but I really wish I could just use the first half. Well, you can, by either using your start shift or your end step. I can decide how long is this little virtual step sequencer. Instead of 32 measures or 32 beats, I'll make it 16. And now I'm just using that first half of that pattern. It never gets to that part that I didn't love, the little syncopated part. I can even shift where the pattern starts compared to when I hit the note. All of a sudden, the downbeat is not the downbeat anymore. It's a different downbeat. So Start Shift allows you to further customize that pattern. And you can see we can access our tempo half speed, full speed, and double speed here as well. Well, let's take a look at a song that I've kind of put together here with strummed acoustic and see an example of some of these things all in action. So I've got a little intro here, and you can see that I've used one key switch and then one playing trigger with the chord. Then in this second part, I've got a nice pattern going on with the chords changing, and I just used one key switch to pick the pattern. I kept the strumming pattern the same, but changed the harmony and the chords as it's going on. You'll notice that some of these chords and some of these key switches are all occurring before the beat. They're not necessarily perfectly quantized. And again, that's okay because the instrument is going to lock to my host tempo, my host sequence. So me playing that stuff a half a beat beforehand is just me preparing to make sure that on the downbeat, the chord is there. It's not going to cut my strum off in the middle of the rhythm and not let me actually have it on the beat. I've got a nice little break here where it just plays the pattern by itself so you can hear it a little bit. And then we've got an ending that we talked about as well, where I've got it playing by itself for a little bit, a nice little pattern, and then a single strummed ending using one of those ending triggers that again is a little bit before the beat, but when you hear it, it's going to fall exactly on the beat because it's sort of a rolled out arpeggio. Let's check it out. So those chords are changing, even though I'm not holding down the strum pattern or anything like that. I'm just playing different chords. Little ending note. And a crescendo pattern. You really hear it building there. Again, the notes are a little before the beat, but it falls right on the beat. Exactly what I was looking for. Well, that's a quick look at strummed acoustic from Native Instruments. I'm Matt Vanacoro from Mac Pro Video and AskVideo.com, and I hope you enjoyed checking out this instrument with me today.